Hello world, my name is Biodun Fato a privileged pastor of the Commonwealth of Zion Assembly in Abuja, Nigeria, Africa, particularly West Africa. I want to welcome you to this wonderful show, Elevate with PB. I want you to know that God has got great plans for your life beyond what men have said about you, beyond the thoughts of people. God has got great plans for you. Psalm 84 verse 11 says, God is sun and shield. He will give grace and glory and no good thing will he withhold from you. I don't know what you're dealing with right now. Maybe you're feeling depressed that a plan did not run on rails. Or maybe what you budgeted did not happen the way you planned it. I don't know what it is. I'm here to let you know that if you're a child of God, God is sun and a shield. He will give you grace and glory. Grace is an unmerited favor. Glory is announcement. So God wants to cover you and he wants to announce you. And let me tell you something. Sometimes God covers you from things that you do not understand, but he covers you and makes sure that things are in place before he releases you onto those things. When God delays your testimony, it is because it's the latest. When he holds back, what you asked him for is because he wants to give you the latest. Listen to me. Your prayer, if you prayed according to God's word, couldn't have gone into voicemail. <laughs> God loves you. And I want you to know that. I may not know why, what and what and what happened to you, but I understand that God loves you. So cheer up and know that if it is delayed, it is because it's the latest. And the Bible says in that same Psalm 84, 84 verse 11, that God is sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from you. That relationship you lost, I tell you the truth. If God was involved and you lost it, he would never have withheld what was good from you. Maybe it's not good enough. And whoever said bye-bye to you, said bye-bye to a breakthrough. Whatever you lost, is it your job? I don't know what it is. I want you to go to rest, knowing that God, when he holds something back, is because he wants to give you the latest. So go to sleep and know that God is up to something. Never call a bend an end, because right now you are at the bend of a tunnel, but light is at the end of that tunnel. In Jesus' precious name. You're on to elevate with PB. Why is it PB? Because my name is Pastor Bearden. Pastor Bearden. So it's elevate with PB. So call your friends. Call your loved ones. Tell them something new is about to happen. I'm about to bring a guest up right now. The guest is like the best thing since sliced bread. I tell you the truth. She is going to be a blessing to you right now. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to allow my announcer to announce the guest before she comes up. Hallelujah. Mirka De Anos is a two-time Emmy award-winning broadcast journalist who has gained credibility and the love of millions in the United States and Latin America. Mirka graduated with a Bachelor in Fine Arts in Broadcast Journalism from the University of Miami and a double minor in Spanish and English. She became known internationally as the anchor of Univision New York's Univision Network's highest rated news magazine program, Premier Impacto, where she covered important news events around the globe. She also hosted her own primetime interview show titled Exclusively with Mirka Deanos. She was invited by Barbara Walters to co host ABC New York's The View on several occasions and collaborated with the CNN network. She has interviewed celebrities like Ricky Martin, Oscar De La Hoya, Jennifer Lopez, Mark Anthony, LL Cool J, Uma Thurman. Ray Romano, Salma Hayek, soccer player Lionel Messi, and opera great Placido Domingo, just to name a few. She has also reported live from diverse locations such as Guadalajara, Mexico, Mexico City, Panama City, Guatemala City, Spain, France, England, Korea, and numerous cities in the United States like Los Angeles, Chicago, Dallas, Houston, New York, Key West, Miami, and Washington DC, among others. Mirka is the recipient of three ACE Awards, two Emmys for reporting and writing. And she was honored as, a, as an outstanding young woman of America and is part of the who's who among Hispanics in the U.S. In 2000, Dianos received the Hispanic Leadership Award by the Hispanic Heritage Council and was chosen as the Hispanic of the Year by Direct Marketing Association of America. 
In 2001, the Human Rights Commission honored Mirka for her dedication in keeping her community well informed. In 2003, she was honored by her peers. The Organization of Ibero-American Journalists gave her an award for her ethics in journalism. Mirka was also the recipient of the Athena Award, which recognizes women that have served as role models for other women. In 2005, the Anos was appointed by the White House as a member of the United States Freedom Corps a group of 25 of the most influential people in their fields who are dedicated to promoting volunteerism. The Anos was also invited by the White House to host the launch of Hispanic Heritage Month. Later that year, Mirka traveled to Iraq to visit the U.S. troops as part of the USO tour with Wayne Newton during the war. The completely bilingual English and Spanish journalist is a successful published author. Her book, Triomfa y Se Feliz, Succeed and Be Happy, published by Random House, was featured in the National Book Fair in Washington, D.C., where Mirka was also the guest speaker in the West Wing of the White House, delivering a powerful nationally televised message on the importance of reading to your children. Due to her success as a journalist and her tireless humanitarian efforts, the Anos was chosen to be on the cover of Siempre Muhe's magazine, featuring the women that most inspire other women in the U.S., the Anos has also graced the cover of numerous other publications in the U.S. and abroad and has been featured on the cover of People in Espanol magazine more than any Hispanic in the U.S. She was hosted, she was chosen as People in Espanol Star of the Year and has been featured in their Most Beautiful People issue five times. She was also named People magazine in Espanol 25 Powerful Women in Television in 2014. A dedicated humanitarian, the Anos has been the international spokesperson for various nonprofit organizations such as Save the Children, Partners of the Americas, World Vision, among many others. And she has traveled to numerous countries to work with homeless children, orphans, displaced and abused women, and former gang members. The Anos also served as an adjunct professor of journalism at her alma mater, the University of Miami, where she was invited to be the commencement exercises guest speaker. She created and hosted a syndicated radio talk show, Una Vida Mayo, A Better Life, that was broadcast in Miami, New York, and Los Angeles. Most recently, Mirka and her friend launched a women's outreach called Amigas en la Cuidad, or Friends in the City. They meet once a month to do a live devotional and motivate edifying friendships among women. This movement is now being enlarged overseas to Latin America. Mirka is a devoted mother and daughter. She's most passionate about sharing the love of Jesus and the good news of the gospel worldwide. Please welcome Mirka Deyanos. Hello, 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 Mirka. <laughs> How are you doing? Well, I, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can see you, but I can't hear you yet. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can hear so, you. So let's see. Good, good. I can you hear, hear me now. now? I can hear you now. I think they had me muted. Oh, okay. <laughs> How are you doing? Hi, everyone. So good to finally meet you. Yes, same here. It's such a pleasure and an honor. Thank you for having me, PB. It's uh, so great to say hi to all the wonderful people of Nigeria. I've had them uh, DMing me, sending me messages. So much love. Thank you so much. How do you say, I celebrate you in uh, Spanish? Te celebro. So I want to start by saying to all the Hispanic viewers right now, those who are viewing from all over the world, particularly from Miami and LA, what did you call it? Te celebro. Te celebro. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Perfect. You are multi-talented. And I must add that, you know, I'm impressed and enthused to be talking to you right now. How do you, how do you juggle a lot of things as a renowned journalist, author, philanthropist, TV and radio show host and more? How do you juggle it all? How do you tell me? How do you juggle it all? Well, I think that the most important thing that I learned um, from my mother is to have your priorities in order. Okay. That way, if something needs to suffer, you know what comes first. In our family, God was first, then family, then career. Please say or that again, say that again, that say that time. again, say that again. And so once you know it's God first, then our family, then career. Wow. So if something needed to suffer or I needed to leave something to the side because of something else, I knew what came first. Hmm. And that has always helped me in my life. Wow. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I'm so, I'm so thrilled that you are, you are a child of God. How do you 
um, we're still going to get deeper into it, but quickly tell mm -hmm. me, how do you function in the world where you function, the entertainment world, the, the media world, and yet you're a mm -hmm. child of God? Do you hide your identity as a Christian, or how do you do it? Tell me. Well, look, um, I spent many years in the public eye, and I believe some people think, well, you were hiding it. We didn't know so much about it. But the issue is that I always, when I was interviewed for magazines, they would ask me, what is your main goal? And I would always say, I want to be in the center of God's will, because that is something that I learned as a little girl, that that was the sweet spot, the place to be, the place of most success would be in the center of God's will. But not many times would they write that in the news articles ah, okay. or when they would cover me. So a lot of people didn't really know that until I stepped out and was then freelancing. And then I began a ministry in 2010 of truly preaching the gospel, being invited by churches, okay. going to women's conferences and things like that. Okay, so America. once you start meeting in churches, then people know about you. But the truth of the matter is, I was always a child of God. Okay, okay. But like, I think we, we had mentioned, I was not always obedient. So, so I'm going to get there. know this powerful testimony. Okay, I'm going to get, I'm going to get there. But I want to talk about an aspect before we start talking about your Christian walk. How do you feel at the moment you received presidential honors from the former president of the United States of America, George W. Bush, Please share your experience with us. Well, I will tell you that um, I've always known that God had put a favor upon my life, not mm. because I am special, but because God chose it to be so as his beloved child. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, so when I received these honors, I, I couldn't believe it. I still, I listen to you now and I am humbled because that God would use me to do something like that or receive certain honors or recognitions. Truly, all honor and glory goes to God because I personally don't deserve it. I am I am weak, and in my weakness, God has been strong for me. So, yes, you feel good and you feel proud, but immediately, those crowns that you receive on earth, I have to immediately place it and give it to God, honestly. I have always felt that way. This is amazing. This is good to hear. If you look at the 24 elders in the Bible, the book of Revelation, the Bible says they took their crowns and laid them before the Lord. The problem with people, why they don't get advanced, is that the moment they, get, they start getting honored on earth, they get carried away. And when your head is too yeah. big, your crown is going to fall down. Well, you know, Pastor, um, it is easy to lose your focus. When, when you're young and when you are walking a red carpet and when you feel beautiful and when you feel, oh, I have a beautiful car and a beautiful house, I, I have accomplished these things that, that I set out to accomplish, you can lose your focus as a human being. And there were times when I would walk a red carpet or be at an event and three days later, I would remember God and think, wow, I didn't even talk to you for the last three days. Wow. I was so much thinking about myself. Wow. But the truth is that when you do that, when you lose that connection with God, you're the one that suffers because God was always there. So I was the one that suffered by losing that connection. I did not wow. have his power wow. then in my life. So Everything. that's very, very important. And now I don't ever want to go a minute without <laughs> counting on him. Oh, my world. I really love that. Everything that works is connected. I want to say that again. Mm -hmm. Everything that works is connected. Now, you could be connected to an evil world or you're connected to the kingdom of God. But everything that works right. is connected. You know, when God made everything, he called the stars out of the, the, the firmament. He called the, the fish out of the water. He called the trees out of the ground. If you notice, if a fish wants to stop leaving, disconnect that fish from water. When God was going to make you and I, he spoke to himself. So if you want a man to stop functioning at full capacity, disconnect him from God. Because we were made to be connected to God. If you look at Absolutely. the sun and the moon, the two of them represent, the two of them represent who we are. 
The sun represents God. The Bible says God is sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold. So God is sun. In Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2, the Bible calls God the son of righteousness. In James, 1, James chapter 1 and verse 17, the Bible says he's the father of lights with whom there is no variableness, neither a shadow of turning. So God is sun, but we are the moon. We are the moon. The Bible says, arise, shine, for your light has come. If you notice, the moon is not a light. The moon only reflects light from the sun. Yeah. So the day a moon will stop, the moon will stop shining, the moon will stop reflecting light from the sun. So we have a lot of people who started shining, but they didn't realize that God is the one reflecting to them. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And he said, I'm the light. So it means he's the light, but we reflect the light. Isaiah 60 and verse 1 says, arise, illuminate, arise, shine. For your light has come. You're not the light. You only reflect the light. So when you That's position right. that the light can reflect to you, you keep shining. That's the secret of keep shining. And I see the reflection in you, even, you know, we're talking to you. I, I, I read about you that you're a lone child. You're the only child of your parents. How, yes. how, 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 how did it feel growing up? Um, to be honest, I always wanted brothers and sisters. I would ask my mom to please go buy me some brothers and <laughs> sisters at, at the store. And um, that never happened. My mom had divorced and she did want other kids, but uh, God only gave her me. So it is, it is a, a tough situation sometimes because your parents do look only to you as a fulfillment of everything that, that wants to be done as a legacy for the family. So there is pressure there, but I learned to live with it. And I also know as I grow older that there was a master plan by God and yeah. that God doesn't fail and that he knew exactly uh, where he placed me as a child and whether I needed to have siblings on this earth or not. And so I am happy and at peace where God put me. But definitely having brothers and sisters, I think, is a huge blessing. I dreamt with having a big family. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Do you have pressure? Um, you, you, you're popular. You're amazing. I looked at your handle. You have 1.1 million followers on Instagram alone. And this is not just some remote place in America. Uh, how do you handle attention? How do you handle attention? Well, you know, I was a very shy uh, person growing up. And as a matter of fact, when I decided to study broadcast journalism, my mom told me, are you sure you want to study that? Because everyone's going to be looking at you in the TV <laughs> cameras. Maybe you just want to be a writer. And I said, no. I really do believe that that is what I want to do. And in a way, even though I'm still a shy person and I'm a quiet person, if you meet me, I'm never going to be the life of the party. I like more communication one-on-one, -on -one, but I just believe it was something that God had placed there, a desire for me to do that because one day he knew that someone like PB was going to invite <laughs> me and see me on Instagram and asked me to share a word with the wonderful people of Africa. And you know what? If it wouldn't have been because I studied that career, all the steps would not have fallen into place so that I would be here on a day like today during this coronavirus epidemic. So God just orders our steps in such a way that he does abundantly more than we could ever, ever imagine. What inspired you to become an author? And please tell us about your book, Succeed and Be Happy. Things? Well, well, I, I, I always liked to write. That was the, the main reason I became a journalist. And when you are in the public eye, many people make assumptions about you. Okay. They may see you, they may see the way you dress, they may see you on TV. And so they think that they know you, but truly they don't really know you. And I wanted to write a book in my own words. There was no ghostwriter or everything. I, I wrote everything myself hmm. so that people would get to know a little bit about me. It's called Succeed and Be Happy, Things I Learned from, my from God, My Mother, and life. Wow. I grew up with a single mom, so I, and a Christian, God-fearing woman. I would get home, and she was on her knees praying for me. And um, 
and the things that I learned about life, making mistakes, falling, standing up again. So I wanted to write a little bit of a book that would tell people a bit of my story, mm -hmm. but also about the hope that I had found in Jesus and how he had guided my life, even when I fell, even when I made mistakes, even when I went out of his will, mm -hmm. you know, God brought me back. Amen. You know, such a sweet and loving father that Amen. no matter where you are, um, you are loved and purposed and God sees the depths of your soul and yet he loves you right where you are. And I love that about God because Amen. we don't have to become perfect to come to him. Yeah. He loves us exactly where we are. And then he takes us and takes our life and so gently says, let me help you now. Let me even help you in your unbelief. Yeah. Let me help you increase your faith. Let me yeah. help you to become everything that I destined you to be. Yeah. Well, I'm going to get into another part of this interview after this break. So okay. get ready. Don't go away. Uh, in case you're watching me, you're on to Elevate with PB. Please don't go away. It's time to call your friends and tell them you're about to learn from this great woman of God. Please mm -hmm. stay tuned. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come But knowing the battles won for you have never failed me yet Ooh, Your promise still stands For great is your faithfulness Faithfulness And I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never failed me yeah. Yeah. Thank you God Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Because your promise still stands. Your promise still stands. Promise still stands. Your promise still stands. Great is your faith, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. And this is my confidence. You never fail. Oh, promise still stands. Great is your faith, your faithfulness, God. Oh, I'm still in your hands, and this is my confidence that you never fail. Fail me, yeah. Oh. oh. Yeah. How many of you have seen God move mountains before? <laughs> Come on, I'm not talking about something somebody told you, but you saw him move mountains.
You're welcome back to Elevate with PB. In case you're joining us for the first time or you just came back, I want to welcome you. We've been interviewing and having a talk with Mirka. Mirka. And I tell you the truth, she's been blowing us away. She's been doing so well. She's been touching lives. Mirka, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you see me? Yes, yes, I can see you. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> okay. You know, there are lots of young people watching right now from all over the world, and they're wondering, how did she get to where she is? I want you to share with us, coming out of college, how did you become who you are today? Well, um, what process I studied did you follow? broadcast journalism. What it process was something you that, um, that I really wanted to study, like I had told you before. Um, I studied that. I started working for a radio station. Um, I had a one of those schedules beginning at four in the morning till 12 noon. I worked weekends. I really sacrificed as a journalist. You have to cover stories at all times. Yeah. So you don't have one of those nine to five schedules like yeah. everyone else. Yeah. I was uh, 20 years old and I remember I had a boyfriend at the time and every time there was a wedding or a party or a dinner, I had to miss it. And so he would go with all his friends oh. and I felt like I was missing out on my life. And I remember telling my mom and she was like, well, wasn't this the dream that you had to be a journalist <laughs> and to work in radio or television? This is your first step. You have to pay your dues and you have to keep moving forward to go through the doors that God opens for you. And I was like, OK, I'm going to do this. I'm going to sacrifice. So I used to work holidays. I used to work weekends and I missed out on a lot, truly, with my friends. But I also gained a lot. And I realized that many times you have to walk a path that other people don't walk in order to achieve the goals that God has placed in your heart and that you want to accomplish. You can't go with the rest of the world. You really have to have blinders and not look to the left or to the right. We know that the Bible says that. And all the principles that are in the word of God are what truly lead us to success. And many times we may think success is having the followers or having the home that you want or the car. And yes, that is a worldly success. But the true success is actually having peace in the midst of struggles. I've been through difficult things in my life. I went through a marriage where there was domestic violence, where my ex-husband was arrested and uh, he, he wanted to kill me. And so wow. it was, it was a difficult situation because I also questioned God and I know that many people maybe today are questioning God, Lord, what are you doing in my life? I feel that you may have abandoned me. Where are you in the midst of this struggle? And God tells you, yes, in this world, you will have tribulation, but I have overcome the world. So therefore hang on to me. Yeah. And this is what I can tell all of you. I hung on to God as I was holding a door shut with my daughter in a room. And this man was trying to break down the door I held on to God and with tears in my eyes, I said, Lord, I forgive him. I hold on to you. And if I die in this situation, my life is in your hands. I know wow. where I'm going. Wow. And so I was able to come out of that. God truly brought me out wow. and he restored everything wow. that the enemy had taken wow. away. And wow. it's, it's so true. If you hang on to God, if you hang on to his promises and just remind him, Lord, I trust you. You said that you would have plans for me to give me a hope and a future. You said that your plans are good and not bad. I believe you, Lord. I don't know what's going on right now, but I believe you. I trust you. Therefore, I wait on you, Lord. I wow. wait on you. I wow. don't believe in what I see in front of me. I believe in your promises and what you say about me and what you say about my future. Let's not look at our circumstances today. Let's look at what God says that he's going to do yeah. with our life. And I promise you that what he begins, he finishes. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Your journey um, from being a student, being a lone child to being a student and graduating and mm -hmm. pressing towards your career. I understand from what you said that if you focus on your focus, you will soon become the focus because right now in the Spanish world, you are like top notch when it comes to your career. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm so proud of you that you are a child of God and all of that. Tell me, have you always been a Christian? Have you always been born again? Did you go astray? How did you get to this level of spirituality? Well, I will tell you that I did grow up in a Christian home. My yeah. mom was a believer. My parents were divorced. And uh, when I was about seven or eight years old, my piano teacher, I studied classical piano, invited us to her church. Oh. Our family, because it's a, a Latin family, okay. had always gone to Catholic church. Okay. And she invited us to an evangelical church. Oh. And my mom saw the pastor preaching from the Bible. And she said, this is what I have always been waiting for. I just wow. wanted someone to teach me from the actual word of God. Wow. And so she went up and accepted Jesus that day. Hmm. And I pretty much grew up in the church and at a youth group, um, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior during a camp. One of those during the, the where they're doing praise and worship and just youth camp. I accepted Jesus at 12 years old. I went in front of the church. Uh, I was baptized and I knew that I was a child of God. And I always had a very close relationship with God because I didn't have my father at home. I remember that God was my father, was my true father. And wow. I would go to sleep. And even if I felt sad or lonely because I didn't have brothers and sisters, yeah. I would hold out my hand and ask God to hold my hand. And I truly felt his presence wow. all my life. Wow. wow. I went to a Christian high school, so I was blessed because of that. But I will tell you that when I started college, I said to the Lord and I started seeing what was going out in the world. Hmm. Um, I told God, Lord, I love you very much, but I will be <laughs> back later because I want to have some fun. Oh, I don't want world. to have to be going to church every Sunday. Hmm. Biggest mistake of my life, oh my biggest God. mistake, hmm. because then when we go our own way, we just don't have the success. Things go, they get sad, you get sad, you get depressed, you make, it's just bad judgment. You you make decisions that have nothing to do with the alignment of God on your life, and it truly goes against who you are. Yeah. So I did marry someone that was not someone who was a Christian, and um I was divorced more than once, and a lot of people questioned, oh, is she a Christian? Is she truly a believer? Hmm. And I told them, yes, I am a believer. I was just a disobedient child of God. Wow. And um, so part of my testimony, when I speak to people, I really encourage young people, allow God to be the God of your youth, because you have such a long life in front of you. Don't think that you're going to have more fun without God. That is you know, a lie from of the, the devil. enemy. Yes. The true the true fun, the true success, the true freedom comes from being a child of God and receiving all the blessings that our Father gives us because he gives abundantly. He gives richly. Remember, he owns the world. He owns everything. Thank everything, you very much. All the success, wow. all the awards, hmm. all the mansions, the houses, the cars, everything that you wish God can give it to you. You don't have to go elsewhere. Amazing. So stick to God. Please don't do what I did. Don't look to the left or to the right. Don't look elsewhere because truly the world has nothing to offer you. Amazing. Nothing. Amazing. We're still going to get to that because I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the Holy Spirit is touching somebody. You know, people don't understand the balance between having a relationship with God and following him. Jesus says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. He says, I'm going to give you rest. So one part of our relationship with God is that he's going to give you rest. But immediately he gives you rest. He says, take up my yoke and learn of me. So it's one thing to be born again, to have a relationship with God. It's one thing to have a contact with the person of Jesus. It's another to understand the principles of Jesus. So when you are saved or you are a Christian or you're born again, whatever you want to call it, and you don't follow his word, you are exactly 
like a man that plants or builds his house upon mm -hmm. a sand. The storm will come, the rain will come, and yes. then it beats it and takes it away. God is a God that doesn't want to tell, tell you about everything. He just informs you and gives you an instruction. Instructions were designed to save you from destructions. I'm going to say that again. Instructions were designed to save you from destruction. Look at what happened to Milka right now. Thank God mm -hmm. for his grace. Thank God for his mercy. She was bounced off. The enemy set her up. Because all, all our life, the Lord protected her. Someone is listening to me right now. God is protecting you with the family God gave to you. Uh, every single thing, every people, everybody God puts around you, all the people around you. God was protecting you by the place he, he placed you. But you think that they are, God, is, God doesn't want you to have fun. That's what you thought. But when you get off track and you're bounced off, you may end up where you did not budget for. You know, God said he was going to save Noah and his family in Genesis 8. The Bible says God was going to destroy the earth in Genesis 6 and verse 8. But the Bible says Noah found grace. So God told Noah, you need to build an ark for me. God spoke about the length of the ark, spoke about the breadth of the ark. He says the ark was supposed to have three floors. Noah had never seen rain before. Just like there are things in your future you've never seen before. God sees your end from the beginning, so he starts to give you an instruction from now. So, God is not a joy killer. When he tells you don't do this, it's for your good. Yes. Noah was supposed to be saved from the flood, but Noah had never seen rain before, never seen flood before. The ark was designed to stand, and the ark was designed to float. So God told him, build with gopher wood here, build with acacia wood here. You have to follow my instruction to the letter. The Bible says Noah followed the instruction, but Noah did not know that when the rain starts, God would have to shut him in. When they entered, God shut them in and the rain started. When the rain started, the rain started to blow the flood was all over the place, and suddenly the ark was lifted. Imagine if Noah had not built according to the pattern of the Lord. When the ark was supposed to float, despite the fact that God intended to save him, he would have disrupted the plan of God's salvation for him. Now, I want to tell you another thing. Did you know that by this time, animals had become carnivorous? And some of the carnivorous animals were in the ark with Noah. God told him, Build this floor and put on clean animals there. Build the next floor, put the clean animals there. If Noah had not followed instruction, right in the middle of the ark, inside the ark that was supposed to save him, there would have been destruction waiting for him. So it's not enough for you to say, I'm saved, I'm under grace. There are instructions that God will give to you. This has nothing to do with the law of Moses. Instructions were designed to save you from destruction. As a matter of fact, the Lord said to me that instructions are the highway to success. I'm so enthused and excited about how you are able to share this part of your life. Very quickly, ma'am, if you would allow me. So how did you bounce back? Because not many people return from where you went to. How did mm -hmm. you bounce back? You know, God is always stretching his hands to reach out to us. But human beings sometimes don't respond to God. The Bible says, draw near to God, and he would draw near to you. How did you respond? How did God help you? Somebody is in that situation right now. Somebody is in a wrong relationship. Somebody is living in a wrong place. Somebody is hanging out with the wrong friends. And they had a very good background. What would you tell them? Tell me what they can do to get back on their feet. I think the first thing is just to say, Lord, help me. He says that he is a ever-present help in times of trouble. He will listen to you. He is wow. there just waiting eagerly for you with so much love and so much care as a loving parent to just pull you out. He loves you. The overwhelming thing that we have is the love and the grace of God, that he forgives our sins and that he puts us right back on the right track. So the minute you raise your hands up, 
Hmm. He will pull you out Hallelujah. of the miry pit. He hmm. takes you out and he puts you on solid ground. And yes, you may have to start over, but he will help you so that you build your house and your life on the rock of Christ Jesus. You had mentioned before, obviously, if we build on sand, in quicksand, when the troubles come, when the earthquakes come, when the storms of life comes, what happens? It is completely destroyed because it, because it was built on something that is not yeah. built to last. Yeah. The only thing that is built to last is the rock, which is Christ Jesus. So the first thing that I would say to do right now, wherever you are is, and God is with you right there listening, hmm. is say, Lord, help me. I need you. I cannot do this by myself, guide my life. And I give you 100% of my life. You may have fear in doing that because sometimes we think that we know better than God, but yeah. that is a lie. Hmm. I can tell you from experience, we cannot choose better than God. Why? He created you. He has the blueprint of your life. He knows exactly what you need, what people are good for you, what people are not good for you, what career is good, what job is best, what path is the path that will lead to success and not destruction. Therefore, I will not take one step without God telling me, move forward. And I suggest to you right now, 100% submission. Say, Lord, I've made a mess of things. I need your help. Wow. Just like that. He is your Abba Father who wow. loves you with an everlasting love. Amazing. And who wants to just come in and scoop you and yeah. put you in his arms. I yeah. always have visions when I pray of just hanging on to the neck of my daddy and wow. sitting on his lap. <laughs> and he is protecting me and taking care of me. So for so many women that I know have not had the love of the father or the correct love of a husband, have been abused, have been set aside have been thought that they are worthless. Yeah. You know what? Your worth does not come from what the world says. Your worth comes because your father made you, created you, and thought about you even before the beginning of the earth. He created this beautiful world, but he created you first, and he had you in mind. He knew exactly who you were going to be and what part of the world he would place you. And so you were made on purpose for a reason and for a great purpose. God says we're all created for a wonderful purpose. And His He is it's his joy to give us good things, a joy of a father, of a parent. So if you submit 100% and you just say to him, Lord, I don't know how you're going to fix this, but it's on you. Fix it for me. I am 100% yours. That's what I would challenge people to do right now. Yeah. The young ladies, the young women, the yeah. young men. We don't yeah. know how to get out of this. No, yeah. Yeah. I can't tell you. No one can tell you, but God knows. He knows the depths of your soul, and he loves you exactly where you are and who you are today. And then he will fix things. He will dry every tear. He holds your tears in a bottle. Everything that you cried in silence God knows exactly because he's been there. I used to sit in my closet as a little girl if I got punished. And I thought no one could see me. But God was in that closet wow. with me. And wow. right where you are right now, if you're scared, if you're feeling desperate, if you're feeling lonely, yeah. if you're feeling that your life has no meaning, God has a meaning. It is a lie. Please yeah. listen to these words. These words are specifically for you, young lady, young man, woman, no matter what your age, you could be 75 years old and feeling that your life has no purpose anymore, that you're ready to go. Guess what? You are on this earth right now, breathing and listening to our words to Pastor PB. You are listening to this because God has a great purpose for your life. And your job on this earth is not done yet. We're here to do great things. We are. And I just pray that you would join us at this very moment and just saying, Lord, I give it to you. I give it to you over and over. Because many times we say we're Christians and that's it. Yes, we're going to heaven. But our life has a meaning and a purpose. Amazing. So if you go the wrong way, guess what? You have another chance. That's God right. gives you another chance. That's He's right. our loving father. That's right. Wow, Mirka, I'm just so excited. I'm just <laughs> so excited. Too. You know, I'm excited for people that are listening that, I'm telling that you. felt that there was no hope. I'm there telling is you. Hope. I'm telling you. Someone said, a smart person said, if you fall, make sure you fall on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. Mm, I want to say true. to you, 
wherever you are, whatever time you're watching this, if you can look up to God, you can get up. And one of the ways you can look up to God is to think about somebody that you know, that you trust, loves God. Because God has positioned someone around you to help you. There is nothing you're looking for that is not around you. There's a lecturer, there's a teacher, there's an uncle, there's an uncle, there is a neighbor, there is a colleague at work that you know that this is a child of God, that God has placed around you to help you. God has stopped coming down from heaven. God uses people around us to help us. So you want to call somebody you trust and tell them, you know what, I watched the program. They didn't really preach, but it touched me. And I want to make a decision. Or you just kneel where you are and say, Lord, you've kept me. Despite all I've done, you've been good to me. I want to make today the first day of the rest of my life. If that's you, give us the honor to pray with you. To pray with you. We've all been through stuff. Probably I've been through worse circumstances than what you're dealing with. But God is a God that can clean you up and give you a brand new beginning. Don't ever compare yourself with any Christian you know. Don't say they're all hypocrites. They're not all hypocrites. You are not the one holding on to God like Jacob, saying, God, until you bless me, I will not let you go. No. In this dispensation of grace, God is the one saying, I don't want to let you go tonight. There is an individual watching me. You've been to prison before. I don't know what you did. The Lord didn't reveal it to me. But God said to tell you, I want to give you a brand new beginning. That when you tell your story, people will not believe it. There's one other person, you got pregnant out of wedlock, and you thought that's the end of your life. God says, I should tell you, I'm going to use your history to elevate you. You wouldn't need to hide it. You will not need to apologize about it. I'm going to use the very thing the enemy thought he had used to end your life. I'm going to use it to give you a brand new beginning. Never put a full stop behind the exploit of the enemy in your life. God is not through with you. God loves you. It doesn't matter how they've presented God to you. He's the most loving father. We are ready to receive Jesus today as your Lord and Savior. Myself and Mirka will be very happy to pray with you. Yes. And all you need to do is just confess out of your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus mm -hmm. is able to save you. If you're ready, please be ready. Say it after me. Say, Father, I've gone astray. I've gone left. But I believe that you can give me a new beginning. Today, I ask you to send your son Jesus into my heart. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe he was buried. I believe he was raised for my justification. Everything he did by his death, burial, resurrection and ascension, I receive today into my spirit. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a new beginning. In Jesus' name. I pray for you that the old has stopped and the new has started. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Mirka, thank There's you so much for coming on this, on this show. But before we go, could you please tell us about your daughter, your wonderful daughter? Tell us about her. Well, well I'll tell you that uh, I have a daughter, um, just one daughter. I also wanted to have more children, but I had one daughter. And um, because of situations that, that she lived with when she was younger, she, she grew up in this Christian family. She also went to Christian schools, but because of my disobedience and choosing yeah. uh, a husband, yeah. she also grew up with situations that were detrimental to her. Okay. So she has known the love of God, but also has chosen a different path. Okay. But God is so faithful and my prayers have been answered and she is back with Jesus and wow. she is just her desire is to honor the Lord with her life and oh, with her platform. God, and God. I will tell you and I will tell parents that feel that 
people that you are praying for are too far gone. It, that is not true. Hmm. God has them in the palm of their hand. And many times we have to release those people that we love to the Lord and say, God, I need to continue my path with you, mm -hmm. but I give you this person because you love them even more than I do. Yeah. And just know that God loves your children more than you do. God yeah. loves your loved ones even more than you do because he also created them for a purpose. Yeah. Amazing. So I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that she is a child of God, that she loves Jesus with all her heart and her story is still unfolding and I give all glory and honor to Jesus because I have prayed on my knees for years for my child and I am seeing the fruit of those prayers because we serve a faithful and loving God, a faithful and loving God. Uh, I love her with all my heart. I would give my life for her and to think that God loves her even more than I do. So I wanna encourage all of you that are praying for people that you love. And if you are one of those children that uh, your parents prayed for you and you thought they were crazy because, oh, why are you praying for me so much? You know, I used to tell my mom, why do you need to pray so much for me? Well, she needed to pray for me so that I could be here on a day like today, honoring God and truly giving him the honor and glory for whatever he's done in my life. So I just encourage all of you to do that. And uh, if you did this prayer with the pastor, you know, I also have a, a very big heart for women that have been abused, that have been bullied, that have been pushed aside, that feel that they're ugly and worthless and either uh, too fat, I don't look good, I don't look beautiful, because they've been told and these voices that they've heard in their head are also a lie from the enemy. And I want to tell you that your identity is is in what God says of you. He says you're beautiful. Mm. He says you're more precious than rubies. Mm. He says that you are so, so loved. And when God uses the word so, it means it, it's an overabundance of love. It's even more than you can imagine. And he created you to do all these wonderful things. He thought about you. He, he has a hair on your head numbered. He knows everything about you. So everything that the world has told you and the voices, they are a lie. The voices that say that you're worthless. That is from the pit of hell. And as you turn today with the prayer of uh, Pastor PB right now, God is putting in your heart and in your soul the Holy Spirit that has come to live inside of you so that you now start to see the world with different eyes and say, Lord, let me see myself the way that you see me. I am beautiful. I am purposed. There is something good for me to do on this earth. And if you just tell one person about your decision, you never know how many more people will come with you. And that is our purpose to speak and preach the gospel to everyone that Amazing. we know so Amazing. that we can all enjoy the everlasting life. And one day we'll be in heaven Amazing. partaking together of Amazing. that great feast, right? Amazing. Amazing. Thank you very much, Milka. In case you're watching all this, I want you to know that whatever you're doing that is creating a gap between you, a gap between you and God, has got a location. If you're on drugs, there's a place where you do it. There's a place where you buy it. If you, I don't know what it is that you do, has got a location. So what you do is to run away from that place. You want to delete someone's um, telephone number from your phone book. You want to call someone and say, please don't come near me anymore. Because yes. whatever it is that is standing between you and God, now that you've made a decision, you need to take another stand to cut off some things off you. Amen. Mirka, Amen. thank you so much for coming on this show. You are such a blessing. We love you. We appreciate you in Africa. And we want you to know that we'll bring you again in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you for joining I me on this show. That. Every one of you, thank you for joining me on, the, on this show. Tomorrow, we're going to come on again and tomorrow is going to be a little bit different because we are hosting Apororo. Hallelujah. He's a comedian and it's going to be a blessing. He's a Christian, he's a child of God. It's going to be a blessing in the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining us. See you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Receive with me the gratitude.
beautiful name is Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name Nothing can stand.